Madam Hat presents... The Strange Dr. Weird. Good evening. Come in, won't you? Why, what's the matter? You seem a bit nervous. Perhaps it would help calm you if I told you a story that I just heard. A strange story about a raven as black as sin that could talk like a man. I call my story The Dark Wings of Death. Before Dr. Weird takes you to his world of mystery, a brief look at the world of fashion. When the new Adam 5 was first designed, Adam's expert hatters spared no time nor expense to make sure that the Adam 5 would be smart, down to the very last detail. They got what they wanted, and so will you, for just $5. The new Adam 5 is now on display at the thousands of Adam hat stores and authorized dealers from coast to coast. Step into the one nearest you and ask to see an Adam 5. Notice the handsome style, the perfect fit, the quality all fur felt. Then, try it on. Yes, sir, you'll look like a new man in your Adam 5. Now, Dr. Weird. And now for my story, The Dark Wings of Death. It begins in the small east side apartment of Ned and Helen Kennedy, who are having a uh, slight discussion. Ned, I tell you, if your Uncle Simon won't lend you the money, you'll have to kill him and take it, do you hear? But look, Helen, if we just wait a little longer, he's so old and feeble, he may die any day now. We can't wait. That shortage in your accounts will be discovered by next week. We've talked this all over before. Why are you hesitating now? You're afraid? No, no, it's not that. It's that pet raven of Uncle's. It makes me so uneasy. His raven. So that's it. You're afraid of a bird. Now, wait a minute, Helen. That raven isn't an ordinary bird. The way it watches me with those red eyes and the way it screeches whenever I'm in the room. Well, it almost acts as if it knew I was thinking of killing Uncle Simon. All right, Ned, go to prison then. No. no I'll do it if I have to. But I'm going to try to borrow the money from him first. You can try, but you won't get it. Now, you'd better get over to that horrible old tenement he lives in with his supper. After he's eaten it and fallen asleep... Remember just how we planned everything. Turn on the gas heater, unlight it, so it'll look as if it had been blown out and he died in his sleep. A few minutes later, Ned Kennedy was entering a small, bitterly cold room on the top floor of an ancient tenement building that stood on the very banks of the East River, its windows looking directly down on the cold, gray water. In a bed against the wall, a white-haired old man lay, his face lighting up with malicious amusement as Ned entered. On the head of the bed perched a huge black raven, and as it saw Ned, it flapped its wings angrily. Quiet, Lucifer! Come on in, Ned. You needn't be afraid of Lucifer. I brought you some soup and sandwiches for your supper, Uncle Simon. I'll put them on the table here. Not poisoned, are they, Ned? Not poisoned by that pretty little devil you married? Uncle, for heaven's sake, don't be absurd. <laughs> here, eat your supper before the soup gets cold. All right, Ned. Now then, what's on your mind? You want something, I can tell. Out with it, Ned. All right, Uncle Simon. I'm $4,000 short in my accounts at the gas company. Huh? I've got to replace the money this week or I'll be caught. And you want me to lend it to you, is that it? Please, Uncle. You've got to. You wouldn't let your only living relative go to jail, would you? I, of course I would. If you've stolen, you should pay the penalty. Why, you miserable old skinflint. No, no, no. Let go, you joke. Lose Lose No, get away from me. Get away from me. He's trying to get in my eye. That'll teach you to try tricks on me. Get him away from me. He's trying to pick my eyes out. Where's your hat? Where's your perch? Look at my hand. It's bleeding. Serves you right. Next time I won't stop him. Lucifer will pick your eyes right out of your head. And your soul right out of your body, Ned. Yes. Carry them away to be Elzebub, his master, too. Oh, for heaven's sake, stop that. Lucifer isn't any ordinary bird. 
He's a winged demon, straight from Inferno. Yes, and as sure as ever you harm me, Lucifer will snatch you up and fly off to the pit with you. I said stop it. Yeah, ask Mrs. O'Rock, the superintendent's wife downstairs. Many the night she's seen Lucifer flying away from the window in the darkness, his eyes gleaming with red fire and his claws glowing with phosphorus, off to pay a visit to the devil, his master. Oh, that's just nonsense. Now, if you've finished, I'll take the dishes away. You... You sure you won't lend me the money then, Uncle Simon? No, I won't. Ten thousand dollars hidden in the wall here beside my bed, as you know. But you shan't have that till I die. I tell you, there's no other way. If your uncle won't lend you the money, you have to kill him and take it, do you hear? Good night, Ned. I'm going to sleep now. After they put you in jail, Lucifer and I will come and visit you. Now and then, the old skin flint. He's asleep. When he's asleep, turn on the gas heater, unlight it, so it'll look as if it had been blown out. In an hour, he'll be dead, and it'll look like an accident. Yes, I have to do it. I have to do it. <coughs> <coughs> Before you take a rest, Dr. Weird, uh, would you tell me the time? You're not leaving already, are you? Oh, not yet, Doctor. I just wanted to remind the man of our audience that whatever the hour, they're usually meeting people whose opinions they just naturally value. Calling on business associates, joining a friend at lunch, going to the theater. Those are the times you want to look your best. And nothing counts more in making a good impression than your personal appearance. Naturally, clothes are important. But what's equally important is that every article fit into the picture. That's where Adam hats come in, because the style of an Adam is just right. Made of fine quality, all fur felt, in the smartest shades, Adam hats are the last word in fashion. Carefully designed, down to the smallest detail, and long wearing as well. An Adam is a wise investment in your personal appearance. So if you want to look your best, Stop your clothes picture with a new Adam hat. Now, Dr. Weird. And now to continue my story, The Dark Wings of Death. After leaving the gas heater turned on full and unlighted in his uncle's tiny room, Ned has just reached home. Helen! Helen! Ned, you did it, didn't you? I can tell by your face. Yes, I had to. He absolutely refused to lend me the money. I told you he would. You got it anyway, didn't you? Where is it? Let me see it. Why, I haven't got it yet. You haven't? Why not? Well, I couldn't get it until he was dead, of course. Till the room was filled with gas and he's breathed it for a while. Oh, yes, of course. But I said it'd be easy, and it was, wasn't it? Yes. Except for the raven. It attacked me. Look at my hand. Oh, it's just a scratch. Don't tell me you're still worried about that bird. Well, suppose it attacks me again when I go back for the money. Forget it. The raven will be dead, too. The gas will kill it. Oh, yes, yes, of course. In any case, I'm going back with you. I'll wait until midnight. He's sure to be dead by then. Oh, and another thing. The room will be full of gas. We'll have to wear masks of some kind. Masks? Why, I hadn't thought of that. Well, I did. As auditor, you have keys to the gas company office. We'll go down now and get two of the masks the workmen use when they're repairing leaks in the mains. In the morning, you can replace them and no one will ever know. It was just after midnight when Ned stood once more in the cold, dark hall outside his uncle's door. Helen at his side. I don't hear any sound inside. Of course not. They're both dead. Come on, put on your mask and let's get it over with. All right. Here, now, this strap goes over your head. Uh-huh. Now, breathe through your mouth. You can talk, too. These masks are the latest type. Talk? Yes, I can, can't I? There. Now, we're all set. Have your flashlight on. Mm-hmm. We mustn't turn on any lights. The least spark would explode the gas and blow us sky high. I know. Come on. He's dead. Of course he is. Where's the raven? Oh, what does it matter? Come on. Help me move the bed. You take that in. All right. Take it easy now. He looks as if he were asleep. Oh, forget him. Where did it keep the money? There's a loose board. That... <gasps> Listen, the raven, it's still alive. It can't be. I don't hear it. There, it's perched on that chair. <gasps> flapping its wings. Oh, get away from me. Get away. Ned, get hold of yourself. 
There's nothing there. Nothing, I tell you. There is. It attacked me. Look out. Here he comes again. <laughs> Trying to get at my eyes. Keep it away. Keep it away. Ned, stand still. You back just right up against the window. I tell you, there's nothing there. It's just your imagination. It's coming in my eyes again. I'll stop it. I'll stop it. Ned, that gun. Where'd you get it? I brought it with me in case of an emergency. I'll stop that, Raven. Oh, don't use that gun, you fool. This room is full of gas. The shot would make it explode and kill us both. Look out. It's coming at me again. Don't stop it. short time later, Mrs. O'Rourke, wife of the superintendent, was telling the police a strange story. Just at midnight it was, officer. And I'm standing at the window when up above there's an explosion, fair to wake the dead. And outside me window I see a great flash of light. And what else do you suppose? You've already told us, Mrs. O'Rourke. You saw a man and a woman blown clear out through the window and into the river down there. Blown out nothing. They was flying through the air, holding on to each other. And that raven had his claws in the man's hair and was flying away with them. His eyes blazing fire as he took them off to the devil, his master. Now, Mrs. O'Rourke, you're letting your imagination run away with you. I know what I saw. But you can't have seen that. Because we found the raven dead on the floor beside the old man's bed. The gas had killed the two of them, both together. about Ned and Helen, wasn't it? Their bodies were never recovered from the river. It was almost as if they really had been carried off to some place not on this earth. But since Lucifer the Raven was found dead beside his master's bed, uh, what do you suppose it was that flew with Ned in the darkness? Birds never have ghosts. Or do they? Oh, you have to go... And perhaps you'll drop in again soon. Just look for the house on the other side of the cemetery. The house of Dr. Weird. While Dr. Weird prepares his statement of next week's thriller, I'd like to read a brief statement from the makers of Adam Hat, who bring you this program. Quote, our purpose is to offer hats of the finest style, made of the finest material, and executed with the finest workmanship. We want you to know that your Adam hat is a quality hat. At the same time, we want your purse to know that Adam offers a great value. So we present our smart line of Adam hats at prices which we honestly believe give you the most for your money. Millions of men agree with us, and we're sure you will too. Step into any of the thousands of Adam Hat stores and authorized dealers all over the nation. And our hatters will be glad to show you our latest line of fine-looking Adam Hat. Price from $3.45 to $10. Unquote. Now, Dr. Weird. I hope you'll drop in again next week. I want to tell you a story I call The Secret Room story about two escaped Nazi prisoners who were quite sure they were smarter than the, the... But the rest of the story will have to wait until your next visit. Good night. Join us again next week at this same time for another visit with the strange Dr. Weird. <laughs> Strange Dr. Weird, directed by Jock McGregor, is presented by the makers of Adam Hats, the hats that are always top in quality. Dick Willard speaking. This is Mutual. <laughs>